Chair, our guest speaker this evening is uh, Mr. Cutler. Thank you. It's just one of these books that you just read, 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 and so make sure you've got a few hours. Uh, it's a fantastic book. Um, I have to say it's a very sad book, you know, and I think that we have to recognize that. Uh, and uh, when, when you go through it, uh, and particularly when you get to the, uh, the, the conclusion, you actually see something of uh, her analysis of what really happened. And it is really the saddest period in, in Irish history. I don't think there's any question about it. And furthermore, and the reason why I'm so grateful to Liz and to all the others who have written books in the series uh, and to Mercer Press for doing this is that it's nearly, a, it's nearly 100 years and yet, <coughs> excuse me, and yet the history hasn't been written. And the history is being written now. We're really indebted to the people who are doing this, such as Liz Gills. We really are indebted to them. Because you hear so much talk about history and uh, some of us were at a certain event in talk a few weeks ago and it was really outrageous. That, the way people were tossing around things that they didn't really know much about and didn't really care much about and uh, uh, without actually looking at the actual facts. <coughs> so it's a big job to be done in terms of these actual facts. Um, this is a very important time from my family's point of view and uh, uh, my father was, like his father, uh, my father Rory was a very quiet man and we didn't talk very much. But one of the things we did talk about a few times was, but what was God we were thinking about uh, in that, that period which is described here in which it was in the Howard building and, and he's leaving and what actually happened. And one of the things that is very difficult about it is that what was written about it wasn't true. Um, so uh, there are a lot of things that were written that were not true. They were written in the heat of the time. Uh, I mean, one of the things that was famously written about him was that he was jealous of Michael Collins. Well, well that certainly wasn't true. That neither was jealous of the other. They were both working on the same side, but they had different points of view. But one of the things my father would have said is, uh, you know, what was, he, what was he thinking about at the time? And uh, we came to the conclusion that we weren't really sure, which is kind of funny. And uh, my father died uh, five years ago now, and he said, well, you know, <laughs> looking forward to meeting him to, to find out. So it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a strange sort of thing, but where you don't really know what your grandfather, what his father was thinking about at the time. We pieced together a lot of things uh, <clears throat> from this, and in fact, uh, Liz's book has really clarified a lot of things. And the thing that was really difficult about this time was that, okay, the War of Independence was a difficult war, but everybody was together. And uh, while they were together, that doesn't mean they had the same points of view. I mean, one of the things about uh, a war of independence when you're Going up against a British Empire that's pretty uh, uh, powerful and strong and so on is who are the kinds of people who are going to get involved in such a war of independence? Oh, that's fantastic. I must appreciate it. Yeah. Um, to be honest, the people who got involved in the war of independence would have to be feisty people. They'd have to be people who are prepared to overthrow things and they would have to be somewhat difficult and not easy to give in and so on. So, what happens? Uh, uh, when you have a different circumstance, and they weren't ready for this circumstance. And uh, what, what is apparent from this book and from all the books that were written around the time is that now you didn't have just one split. You had splits and splits and splits and splits within splits. I mean, I could identify probably four or five or six different groupings at the time of the Civil War. Um, <clears throat> I mean, on the Free State side, you would have had Griffiths, who you know, wanted to settle, and you had Collins, who said, like, well, I want to settle, or it's Stepping Stone, and then start going into the north. And then on the Republican side, you had uh, Liam Lynch and Colin Road, who were saying, well, we're Democrats and follow the will of the people, but we're, we're Republicans. <coughs> and then you had the people in the foreign courts who were saying, no, 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 you know, we're, we're just going to start this off again, and so on. And then you had disagreements. And some of the interesting things were they, they had three conventions of the officers. Uh, and at the third one, it was the final one. And uh, 
and they voted to go into the four courts and uh, they actually had two votes. And there's another book that has come out recently, uh, uh, Andy Cooney's book, I don't know whether, you, whether you've seen it, but it, uh, it was, um, you know, it's one that's been on the way out for a long time, but he was actually on the door of that officer's convention. And somebody criticized me and said, you know, what happened with the second vote? Did you let people in that, uh, that weren't registered or whatever? But actually one of the people that was let in was, was Gal Rose. And when the vote went to go into the four courts, he stood up and he argued the case, and the vote went the other way. You know? And they actually have the number, 113 to 109 or something like that, or no, a bit bigger, to, to not do that. So they're all having these arguments all the way through, and this is brought out here, and it's, you know, it's very, very interesting. Um, and then not only did you have those divisions and Rory Connor leaving the, 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 the group because the headquarters that the, the, the staff of the, uh, the, the headquarters staff left the top table, walked out through the hall and said, well, we're going into the four courts anyway. They had lost the dart. And after that, there were weeks and weeks and weeks of negotiations trying to actually get, get them to leave. And you had two groups within each group. You had those who were in the IRB and those who were outside the IRB. And then, uh, so, you know, uh, Carl was outside the IRB and he was arguing with people in the four courts to come out and Liam Lynch was in the IRB and he was uh, arguing with them also to, to come out. And at a certain point they wouldn't let Liam Lynch in anymore. Now, but there's another factor which is also relevant which comes out in this book which, which is words for relating to, it's the numbers. Nobody's really researched the numbers. The numbers, we know the numbers were in the doll at the time of the, 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 uh, of the, the treaty uh, and, and how they voted. But we don't know how many were in the IRB who voted that way or not, but we don't know exactly how many officers say, at the end of, of that period actually went Republican, went Free State, but actually a lot more went Republican, a lot more went, uh, a few went Free State. But on the general headquarters, it was more uh, uh, when Free State with uh, Collins and uh, Owen Duffy and those and Mulcahy and fewer went the other way. The sad thing about it is that the people, some of the people like Rory O'Connor, who were in the four worlds, were on the GEQ staff and were subsequently executed by some of their own colleagues. So, I mean, you can have a sad story. Um, it, it is really, it is quite, quite a terrifying thing. They weren't ready for it. Um, and the arguments of their arguments, they were about strategy. And uh, you know what would work and what would not work. It was they were aware that they were not going to succeed in uh, uh, getting the uh, you know the four northeastern counties. But the question was, uh, how much could you get? And in the middle of the attacks coming on to the four courts, you had Republicans and Free State joining together to go to the north. You know, so this is quite quite a, a unusual and, and quite contradictory to what you would have would have expected. Other things that come out is, in the book is why people changed. You know, when the British handed over the barracks, the first barracks was, was uh, one of those Beggars Bush barracks, and they handed over Beggars Bush barracks, and then uh, soldiers went in there, got commissions, and some went in, didn't get commissions, and some who went in, and then they saw some of the uh, Free State soldiers actually related to British soldiers, in, you know, at different points, and some said, well, I don't like this, and they turned over to the Republican side. Things happening instantly. It was really quite a disaster, quite a tragedy, and a lot of this is brought out in the book, and, and it's well worth uh, connecting with. But so, <coughs> I mean, one of the reasons why I, 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 I am proud to be a grandson of Carl Rowe is that he tried to prevent this from happening way back in, in the. This, Start of the war of independence, he tried to get rid of the IRA because he said that you, you have a, a division, an IRB, a secret society within a proper uh, a, a government structure, and he tried to get rid of that. Now, so these were subtle things, but then maybe he made a mistake because he, he brought, he, he argued with the case that you should have a, an oath of loyalty to the Thal and to the Republic. But this may have actually triggered a difficulty later because some of the people who, uh, when the whole thing had fallen apart, uh, some of the people <coughs> following that oath uh, found it uh, they, you know, difficult to change and, and to go back to it. So it, it's a, a difficult time, it's a time worth writing about. I wouldn't say it's, it's a happy book, but it is, it is a wonderful book. Um, uh, and I say, uh, 
uh, it's, it's great, it fits in one's pocket, you will read it in three or four hours and you want to go back and read it again and again. Um, what more can I say? I don't want to delay any longer. I, 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 I'm really proud of Liz. I think she's wonderful. And she's probably a little bit nervous because she's going to have to speak next. But, uh, uh, she, she is a, she's, she's a, a, a colleague of Boomfuck. And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, I, I'd like to just uh, congratulate you again, Liz. Congratulate Marcia Press. And let's hand over this here for the great woman herself.